Hey guys, so, um, look, we haven't been able to retake Jerusalem for a while. Fine. I'll do it myself. Religion. The only thing that could convince white people to visit the desert before oil was invented. In fact, religion was so good at this that it gave birth to a whole franchise. However, when most people talk about the Crusades, they're usually only referring to the eight or maybe nine numbered Crusades, of which only the first four ever really get talked about. But this video isn't about those Crusades. This video is about a couple of the weird, meme spin-offs. At the beginning of the 12th century, the low-lying, swampy lands around the Weser River Delta in Germany were pretty much uninhabited. Lord knows that Germans weren't going to get their feet muddy, so they brought in the experts. So, you're looking for people to settle your swamp? Yes. Well, this is our most popular model right now. What are these ones? Oh, those are Dutch people. I will take your entire stock. In exchange for settling the previously unusable land, the wet German, I mean Dutch people, were given hella tax breaks and a cool new name, the Stenningers. Things were pretty hunky-dory for a while, until the nearby Archbishop of Bremen started to get a little too pushy about church donations, so the Stenningers murked a priest and just stopped paying taxes completely. However, the Archbishop wasn't actually able to do anything about this rebellion because German politics, no, not you, got in the way, so the Stedingers got to enjoy several years of every Neo-Confederate's dream, living tax-free in a highly religious and all-white rural community. Unfortunately, the Stedingers paradise came crashing down in 1219 when a new Archbishop, Gerhard II, came to power. You see, Gerhard needed money, and when he looked through the tax books, it didn't take long for him to notice that there were a bunch of clog-wearing simpletons in the west of his realm that were paying literally no taxes. Gerhard immediately sent some dudes over to the Stedingers to collect what was owed, but like his predecessor, he was unable to follow up because German politics, no, got in the way again, so a few more years passed with no progress. Finally though, in 1229, Gerhard and his brother Hermann raised a small army and marched into Stedinger territory to squeeze some taxes out of them. In a big plot twist, however, the Stedingers were actually able to beat the Archbishop's army and even killed his brother Hermann. Don't feel too bad though, I'm pretty sure names as derpy as Hermann are against the Geneva Convention, so killing him was probably a favor. Gerhard didn't share that opinion though, and was so sad about his brother's death that he built a convent in memory of him. Which is so dumb, I mean- wait, actually. Gerhard then summoned a church council, which promptly decided that the Stedingers only won because they cheated and were heretics. In addition to the more typical peasant superstitions, Gerhard claimed that the Stedingers sacrificed children, had massive orgies, and worshipped the devil, which, I mean, is basically just New Jersey, but you don't see us complaining to the Pope about them. Now that he had proven he was fighting heretics, Gerhard requested a crusade against the Stedingers, so the Pope sent some dudes to investigate. However, German politics, not yet, got in the way again, and it took significant pressure from Gerhard to convince the church to launch a crusade. The Stedingers hadn't been idle either though, and before Gerhard could effectively recruit a large crusading force, the Stedingers launched some preemptive raids and screwed up the whole operation. This defeat alarmed the Pope, who responded by giving crusaders who fought against the Stedingers the same heavenly rewards as crusaders who went all the way to the Holy Land. So I have two options. I can either travel thousands of miles to a desert where everyone hates me, risking life and limb along the way to fight our sworn religious enemies, mm -hmm. or I can go across the street and kill those peasants a local politician doesn't like. Yep. And you're telling me that God will be just as happy with either of those. Yes, that is correct. Using his religious magic, the Pope was even able to convince some local cities to lend the Crusaders some boats so they could blockade the Stedinger's rivers. Stedinger territory cut off by this impromptu navy was then quickly seized by Crusader forces. 
However, when the Crusaders tried to follow up on this success by attacking more fortified Stedinger positions, they discovered that heavy armor doesn't float that well and a bunch of them drowned. Not to be deterred, Gerhard rallied the remainder of the Crusaders and met the Stedingers in battle on May 27, 1234. Casualties were heavy on both sides, but this time the Crusaders, who heavily outnumbered the Stedingers, were able to flank the Stedinger pike wall and claim victory at last. As a bonus, since the Pope had given them absolution from sin, the Crusaders got to pillage the whole area and slaughter countless innocents completely guilt-free. In fact, after his victory, Gerhard was so proud of himself that he began a yearly celebration to remember what a jolly time crushing those illiterate peasants was. And then German politics changed things. And this time Hitler actually was involved. You see, as time went on, the Stedingers went from being viewed as rebellious devil worshippers to misunderstood victims of a greedy church. By 1934, this view was so widespread that the Nazis decided to hold a festival to let everyone know how great all the pure Aryans who revolted were. So, on the 700th anniversary of the Stedingers' defeat, these freebooting peasants were remembered with a speech praising Hitler and a visit from Heinrich Himmler. I know that this is probably an unpopular opinion, but politicizing the Stedingers' history like that was probably the worst thing that the Nazis ever did. New narrator, roll with it. The Shepherd's Crusade is almost a crusade within a crusade because it never would have happened if it weren't for the Seventh Crusade. After the Mongols chased the Persians out of Persia, they joined forces with Egypt, but you don't make that kind of a proposal without a gift, so they took over Jerusalem on Egypt's behalf. And Louis IX of France is outraged. Christians, he cries, arm for the rescue of Jerusalem under your Captain Christ. Wear his cross as your badge. Whoa, hey, maybe dial back on the papal bull, yeah? That's kind of my thing. Will you not fight for the Holy Land? Ah, uh, right now I'm kind of busy. Busy? With what? Uh, Holy War? So France goes on crusade without any friends, and hijinks ensue. I go into more detail in the video that just came out on my channel, but the long and short of it is, the Sultan of Egypt dies, and his wife impersonates him for three months hoping no one will notice, and she trounces the French army so badly that the French king gets locked up. So now, the people of France had a much bigger mess on their hands, and the only thing to fix it was another crusade. Old narrator, roll with it! Back in Europe, people felt like a lot of this shenanigans could have been avoided if the Pope wasn't being such a whiny bitch. You see, while King Louis of France was off in Egypt fighting the good fight, the Pope had allowed himself to get distracted with, you guessed it, German politi- No Hitler, we already talked about you! Long story short, instead of rescuing Louis from the Holy Land, the Pope was fighting a crusade in Germany that made people mad. So mad, in fact, that they decided to take things into their own dirty little peasant hands. So sometime around Easter of 1251, a peasant movement sprung up in Flanders with the goal of rescuing King Louis. After asking his wife for permission, of course. However, this movement, like many other trends, didn't really kick off until it reached France. Here, it fell under the leadership of a mysterious man known as the Master of Hungary. I am the Master of Hungary. Oh, you are hungry? Would you like a baguette? N no, no, I'm the Master of Hungary, like, like the plague. Oh, you are the Master of Hungary? Oh, you must be very hungry to be its master. The master of Hungary's real name was Jacob, but he claimed to be a runaway priest from Hungary, which makes no sense to me. I mean, this dude goes through all the trouble of coming up with a fake backstory, but instead of pretending to be something cool like a cowboy or astronaut, he's like, nah, I'm gonna be a Jesus groupie from Central Europe. Stupid backstory or not, Jacob soon took over the whole movement and began leading his followers to Paris so that they could have a chat with the queen about rescuing her husband. Jacob claimed that he had received a super secret letter from the Virgin Mary that told him to bring an army of shepherds to the Holy Land to aid King Louis. However, he played pretty loosey-goosey with the whole shepherd bit and soon attracted a following of all kinds of people. All kinds of people, except actual religious officials. You see, Jacob wasn't like other priests. He was quirky. 
He did things like marrying nine men to one woman, and he didn't want any other holy men cramping his style. Turns out that his followers were pretty ticked off at the church too though, and on their way to Paris to simp for the queen's approval, they made a pit stop in the city of Rouen, where they drove the archbishop out of his cathedral and then rioted for a few days. Remember, this is a French crusade. It's a miracle they lasted this long without burning down one of their own cities. Reaching Paris, Jacob and his gaggle of peasants were welcomed by the queen, who I guess just hadn't heard about all the riot stuff. Jacob was even given an audience with her. I'm so glad to have you here, Jake. I mean the master of Hungary. Say, could I have a peek inside that letter the Virgin Mary gave you? This is a $5 Starbucks gift card from six years ago. God works in mysterious ways. Anyway, this audience backfired because after the queen told Jacob what a great job he was doing, the crusaders figured that since they had the queen's approval, they could get away with anything. Like, anything. So Jacob, being the weirdo that he was, cosplayed as a bishop and took over one of the main cathedrals in the city where he performed a heretical sermon. Meanwhile, his mob of disciples kidnapped several monks, killed a few clergy members, and then threw several others into the river. Even after pulling all this shenanigans though, the mob was allowed to leave Paris unharmed with the queen's blessing intact. But then she changed her mind and had her army kill all of them. The end. <coughs> I'm dog sitting for my uncle up in Wisconsin right now and I left my mic at home so that's why this sounds like garbage. Anyway, uh, people have been begging me for like a year to plug the Discord so uh, yeah, we have a Discord. Link is in the description. It's a good time. Feel free to join. Uh, also, make sure that you go check out Jack Rackham's video. That's also a good time. Uh, there's just lots of good times to go around. Okay, bye!